I will call the personnel committee meeting together, 604. I will start by seeing if I have a motion or first of all, did everybody read the minutes from the last meeting? Susan, did you see them? Are you all set? Yes, yes, and I move to accept the minutes. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes. Any other discussion? If not, I will do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself, I, and I'm assuming you abstain. you'll abstain because you were not here. Okay, so the meeting, minutes passed. The next item is to get right back in where we left off from the last meeting, and that is to go over section, starting on section four. Oh, good. Susan, do you have a copy or do you need me to put yeah, it on? Yeah, I have a copy and I've made notes in it. I'm not going to share my video because you don't need to see me blowing my nose and I may mute sometimes if I need to cough, but I have comments that I can <laughs> contribute to the conversation. Okay. That was good. Um, so, do we just want to just sort of start going through the sections again like we did last time? Yes. Um, so we covered sections one through three so in the previous meeting. So this is uh, section four employee benefits. This is the draft. Well, it's like the draft number one, 12, 8, 23. This is the draft provided by the uh, consultant. And any of the track changes are things that I've added or deleted um, based on our existing policy the town of Whitley's existing policy. Um, so the first one is uh, health insurance. Uh, the town currently pays, um, so the town currently pays 75% of an HMO and pays 70% of a PPO for um, active or, or current employees. Um, the town also pays a certain percentage of uh, healthcare costs for retirees. Um, and that's what was included in that second paragraph there. It talks about um, what the what the town residents have voted to provide to retirees. So I pulled that over from from the existing policy after talking to the, the treasurer collector to make sure it was something that we were still actively doing. Um, B was language suggested uh, suggested from the consultant related to COBRA. C was, and if anybody had any comments, just please stop me. I have, I'll just keep, I'll just keep going. Um, so C talked about unemployment insurance. Um, so I, the town doesn't currently have unemployment insurance. It's self-funded for unemployment because it has so few employees and this rarely comes up, but it's uh, there's a certain amount of money budgeted each year uh, to cover those costs if they were if they were to arise. Um, so I just changed the we talked about employment costs. Um, and I deleted any any reference to unemployment insurance. Can I um, just interrupt? And also, for the benefit of my committee members, I'm just going to tell you guys I called Brian today since I've written or edited policy handbooks for various municipalities in my prior life. And I am no expert at all. I'm sorry, what? So we should have paid you to do it. <laughs> well, it is, you know, we got. As Brian told me today, I, I said, I don't want to call you if it's inappropriate to call you, but here's what I suggest. So I'm going to give Brian my markup and Brian agreed to this. Anyone else can have my markup. It's just that I'm not going to go through every little fidgety, you know, I'm an English major first and a lawyer second. But anyway, that, that, that and my prior history informs part of my markups. So I said to Brian, I'm not gonna just talk about every paragraph. I'll give you one markup, I'll keep a copy. We can talk about it, we can come back to the table. Let's just not belabor the process. It's a very long handbook for 
50 or 60 employees and 2,000 people. It's too long. And is what, what I said previously is like, it looks like a lawsuit waiting to happen because don't have a policy if you're not going to follow the policy. And a lot of these policies, like I would just circle it and write a note to Brian. Is this how it actually works? Because you got a lot of policies in here that I wonder if it, that's how it actually works. But that is not for tonight. Uh, Brian and I and us, I mean, obviously we'll work it out, but I just don't want to belabor the process. Um, so there's that. So I said only on substantive things am I going to pipe up tonight. And this one, I because I don't, are we self-insured? Is Waitley self-insured? You don't pay into self to to the under. Okay. Correct. Okay. So we we and you'll see my notes. And I'm gonna you and I can talk about it. That needs to be written better. And I, we're not gonna do it tonight. But that it's not clear that that says we're self-insured. There's a better and brief way to say it that's better than what that is. And that's another reason why, while it hasn't happened recently. There's been times where when a department has to look at a, lay a, a layoff, we've had to seriously consider two people to pay for one because we don't pay unemployment benefits. I mean, unemployment insurance on a regular basis. We, we go out on a limb hoping that we don't have that, but when it does come to it, Right. And so the employment handbooks that I wrote was never for private employers. It was always for the town of Longmeadow or the town of Chippewa or the town of So I get, so this is not the, that one. And oh, also, I just want to say that I'm going through it and I see what Brian wrote. And I just, I didn't know I was going to give him my markup. I just write a note to myself. Good, good. Those are all with what Brian did. To the, so he did a fantastic job with this. And it's, so I just wanted to say that, and I will try to not say too much tonight, but we got to work on this section. Well, we have your expertise too, yeah. so. Good. Thank you. Next section, retirement and pension benefit. So the town does belong to the Franklin Regional Retirement System, not the Franklin County Retirement System. Um, So yeah, I mean the town follows the the those requirements of the regional retirement system. I don't have to do other pop on that. The next section for compensation. To my knowledge, the town doesn't offer any additional for compensation plans. Whether it should or shouldn't, I don't know, I haven't thought about it, but to my knowledge, I don't think the town does. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about that. I don't I know some people have asked me in the past if, if the town has had something about that. If the town has had something like that, but I don't think that it does. The only thing that I remember was I want to say they used the word cafeteria plan where some things were pre-tax, but it's not a Deferred compensation. The other thing that's come up a little bit is, is the um, health savings account. I know it's not directly relevant to this, but people have talked, someone's asked about like a health savings account, I think it's called the HSA, where you put in you put in a certain amount of money into it. And you can set aside a certain amount of money for qualified medical like medical expenses, pre-tax, and then I think as long as that's for like co-pays, isn't it? You can use co-pays and I think those are just conversations that independent of this that might that we should have at some point. I don't think it's a big cost for the town, but because I think it's the benefit for the employees. That um, reminds that reminds me, do we have a 403B or anything like that? No. Oh, what aware. was your question, Susan? If we have a 403B. Retirement plan. Four hundred three. Four hundred three. You don't have four hundred three B. I mean, we don't have four hundred three B. What? How is that possible? It's like a a four hundred one k, but 
for a non-taxable entity, which the town of Waitley is, it's a it's a retirement plan. No. You you don't have. I don't believe so. So I know that because I put in money to it when I was no. a teacher. I'll double check, but I don't think it was ever offered them. No, there's a county uh, anyway, a lot of these, and then the other thing that came up for, while we're on the topic of what we don't have, there's been conversations about uh, establishing a sick bank as well. Okay, sick bank. Um, yeah, sure, that sounds great, but not having a 403, but you don't have a 401, the equivalent of a 401k from the town of Waitley after all your years. Oh, that is just not right. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to agree. Office in Waitley, <laughs> but that's not right. Yeah. It's a. I'm sorry. No, I just said I tend to agree with you that oh, I'm surprised we don't. I think we should. That is shocking to me. You don't have like. No, work at you. Live off. You don't have a four hundred three B here after. I mean, you've you got so off, many. You years. live off of your county retirement. Which is yeah, 80%, yeah, which yeah, is I guess. Okay, I way, mean, way more than what you're going to get out of Social Security, but uh, you know, I understand what when you're in the private sector, you go into your 401ks or things like or, that. or 403bs. I mean, my mother worked for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for 30 years and she's got a, yeah, okay. okay. Anyway, okay, all right, so, that's for so, another night also. But those types of things, this is probably where you should be adding in, right? Right. I mean, the pension benefits. At least a discussion. I mean, I know, and, you know, then there's going to be pushback because of property tax rate and all that stuff. But, um, okay, it should at least be talked about, I think. Health, uh, Health insurance portability and accountability act. I didn't have any there to change it with that. All right, cruising right along out section four. Section five is talks about leave benefits. A lot of these changes were good. My question, my question yeah. here is in the list of holidays that yeah. we've crossed off indigenous people and put back Columbus Day. And that can be a sensitive issue for people. Can we have it as you know both with a slash or something? So you we don't piss anybody off. I don't have a preference. The only reason I changed it is because I the the it's never been voted to be changed. That's and the statute because I looked at it because my husband is deeply into indigenous people's rights and I looked at the statute. Massachusetts is one of the states that still refers to it as Columbus Day, but I think a slash Columbus slash Indigenous People's Day is probably the right way to go. I didn't do that because I didn't want to be too nitpicky, but. So, I mean, right, this would be, couldn't that be a scenario where it could easily be in a, a change made when and if the state changes their terminology on it, that it's, but, okay. Well, the statute still says Columbus, so even though my husband will look at me when I call it Columbus Day, <laughs> I'll be like, Sorry, that's what I grew up. But anyway, yeah, it's what the statute is. So that's mass law currently, Columbus. Uh, it, it just before we get into the list, just it. So there's a recurring. A lot of these leave benefits are prorated based on number of hours. Uh, the number of hours. Worked out of a forty-hour work week, and that's that's for, that's language that keeps recurring throughout. It just seems kind of clumsy the way we, we talk about it. Um, I mean, it's prorated based on the full amount, based out of the. Is it the number of hours regularly? It's a number of hours regularly scheduled. It's a normal right? Not hours work. But it's all prorated on you on an employee working an eight hour shift or an eight hour day. So if an employee only works there works four hours per day, it's half of what or you get half in this case, like instead of an eight hour day, you get four hours off for the holiday. But 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 it's prorated from a 
full time or based on a 40 hours basis, based on a 40 hour correct work week and it's regularly scheduled correct and then there are communities in Waitley I don't think Waitley ever falls into this but I know in some other towns like if like a highway department works for 10 hour days and the holiday comes up in most cases they have to use two hours of their own time on a day off like on a holiday because it's based on an eight hour day yeah you know, okay. but i don't think in this case less than the police department was jim at one point working for 10 so i i think he might have been like no I'm not sure, but should be. Yeah. And that's why it's more or less tries to give the same amount of time off for an employee. And you don't have an employee. I mean, you could have a somebody working at 12 hours on a certain day. They shouldn't get 12 hours of vacation day when someone else is only getting eight hours for vacation day or not. I mean, a holiday. Right. I didn't know what floating holiday under special circumstances was. Okay. I assume that's talking about the, the birthday day holiday that the town has instituted. It was, it's basically the, your birthday off, yes. Right, but that needs to be taken during your birthday month. The way, the way we had it worded was during the month. And so, because if someone, you couldn't have it on the date itself because should someone's birthday be on a on a weekend or they're not normal a day they don't normally work, you, it's, it's hard to say. Well, that's your tough luck. Um, whereas, like, a, if July Fourth is on a Sunday, we have Monday on, and then we have also the scenario. In fact, I have an employee in my department. His birthday's on June thirtieth or 29th, something like that, and. We also ran into the scenario where we're trying to use it in the fiscal year. And so we have to, you know, so that's why it has to be used during the, the month. Yeah. The mention of floating holiday, aside from, you know, separate from birthday, does that relate to if someone has a religious holiday that is not? Listed as the the day is granted. How do we handle that? I mean the way there's the last paragraph of that section talks about time off to observe other cultural and religious holidays not listed. Um, it talks about it being unpaid. So that's how the existing policy current currently deals with it. I don't I don't know what the reference to the floating holiday under special circumstances is. Okay. Yes, all right. At the moment, they would that employee would have to use their own additional bank time, whether it be a personal day or a vacation day. The way it is right now. Or we can address that scenario right now, too, and make a recommendation that we change that. What's everybody's thought on that? I mean, as far as playing with other. Um, especially the religious holidays. Where I've seen that as a problem we don't run into, which is organizations that make a holiday of something like Good Friday, which is a religious holiday, but not a federal holiday. Christmas is a federal holiday. So that's aside. But I've had employees object when... They had to take a day for their religion, but 
Good Friday was off. We don't run into that because we, anybody, everybody, most religions are in the same boat if they want to do it. We're not favoring any. No, I mean, the only per se is, is Christmas is the only, we did many years ago have Good Friday off, but we swapped that for Patriot's Day. Which again, the Patriots Day was a state holiday. It's not a federal holiday. It's only a state of Massachusetts. I'm okay with it the way it is, unless somebody makes a compelling argument. Yeah, I'm gonna have to defer to you because you're in the trenches. I just don't know. I've never had an, an employee come to me and say, how come I don't have Hanukkah or something? But that, by no means objecting to, to trying to work something out with that wording of a floating holiday somehow. I mean, I can ask the pencil then if it's something that is. What other? But they see yeah. it, it, that's something that's. Okay. Out in other communities. My my daughter teaches in Loyalty. She just had this past Friday off for Three Kings Day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I worked in Boston as a lawyer for and 15 like years. And we Day. had Patriots Day, and my sisters and my family who lived here in Western Mass didn't get Patriots Day. I mean, it, it's, it's fairly fluid. And, and so I, I don't know. The only thing I could have thought was potentially in Holyoke uh, that had more meaning that in that area in that area had more meaning and that's why their school district yeah. had been off. Yeah, I think we have some degree of flexibility right. that's probably the bottom line on that. But yeah, ask the consultant. Yeah. And the current policy has you have to work a holiday, it's double time, right? Uh, Correct. Time. If you're and this is the key thing, and I don't want to get to look at it, is when you were when your supervisor or department head tell you you have to. It's not that you you can have someone say, you know what? I choose to come. I, I don't care. I want to work on Veterans Day and then get double time for doing it when you're not required to do it. Yeah, so this is a small example of where I tightened up the language so it's clear that an employee couldn't just say, oh, I think I'll work right. and get double time. So, you know, yeah, we don't need to flavor it. But yeah, but there are places that I have some chance to try to do that. But should there be a massive snowstorm, like in my department, a massive snowstorm or a tornado or what, you know, what some kind of natural disaster that I have to call somebody in. That's what that's. Yeah, and in, I think. Or any other department that sure. has a justifiable reason. Next was paid vacation leave. Well, before, before we move on, I don't know. The paragraph that starts holidays that fall on days that an employee is not normally scheduled to work do we yeah. have to specify because it's saying you know you can work this day or that day with the approval of your of the supervisor yeah and i i, I added at the option of question mark because is, is it at the option of the employee or the town so i assume it's at the option of the town, not the employee, but maybe it's got the option of the employee. I just don't know. You can get to that exact wording. What, what paragraph were we in? Uh, yeah, our hall looked different, but it's right here. Okay. We're printing out holidays that fall on days that employees not normally scheduled to work. Right. 
Yeah, so is that at the option of the employee or the town? I just think it needs to be added there. Yeah. That's basically would be like on, for instance, most cases, weekends. Yeah, does the employee Fridays. get to choose which day they take it or right. does the town dictate? I thought in the it, past the town dictates. It has, it, it has come up. I don't remember which was a Veterans Day or Friday holiday. It, it came up this past year, I think. Did it? Okay. People were wondering, well, can I just and see that's I want at the direction? And I was like, yeah. okay. well, that's it, doesn't you know, that I, might be a little. I, I liked it where it was sort of black and white. It's like. So it's, it doesn't end up being a floating holiday because I'm like, do I need to take it in this pay period? Can I use it this month? Can I can I can I wait till June thirtieth and use it? And then it's like, I don't think we want to be stacking. We don't want people banking. Not that it's gonna right. accrue too much, but right. we, we don't want this way people banking these holidays just because they're not scheduled to work on Saturday or Friday or something. Right. That would I, be I like more this. likely to be someone, for instance, here in this building versus my department who will have to work every Friday anyways. Right. Until you go to four tens. So, <laughs> how, so then how do we want to leave it then? Add the words. Well, I've already added the words, but Brian's going to figure out if it's accurate at, at the direction of the town. Is, is that what you're saying? Direction of the... Or, or, oh, no, it's not the town. It's got to be like the supervisor or. All right, but I'll make an example. What if we have, you know, how does it work for like the town clerk? If they weren't working on that. If, that, that, if that's right. They're unelected to, by the people. Their supervisor is not necessarily the town administrator, the site board. Yeah, the town clerk is the one. Odd. Odd. And yeah. that's approved by who? Uh, I, I, it, it seems to me it could be at the election of the of the employee, but it would seem to be have to be approved by the at the election of the employee as approved by their supervisor. Is that a yeah, because I think the supervisor is going to want if something and again the day before you're going to have you need you have work schedule that you need somebody there you're going to want to say you can't use it and again, on Monday you can use it right. Thursday because I don't have the a vendor coming in to do work that you need to place for. It's definitely more of an issue again in, the, in this building because we're also dealing with schedules of, of public coming in here, right? having to have people expecting, and they'll say, well, I'll make an example, well, July 4th was on Friday, why are you closed on the 3rd? Why, you know. All right, I threw in some language. You'll you can okay. see you have feet on the ground, so you know better. But this is just another example of me saying we are getting to way into the weeds for 50 employees, and now you've got a policy that you don't follow. It's better to okay. to I mean, obviously you gotta follow the law and everything else, but you get we're getting way into the weeds. But anyway, I put into the language, see if it works or doesn't work. I mean yeah, I need the people who are actually in the trenches, not a lawyer sitting, or I'm not doing this as a lawyer, but sitting so far away from the actuality of day to day. So, we need and do we have the same issue a couple paragraphs down uh, when it's referencing the unique needs of the police department? Well, I reference yeah. that because it needs to go up front. Anyway, that. Um, I didn't actually have any change to the actual wording of that paragraph, but I don't know. I, I just feel like we need to make sure that the supervisor signs off and that the employees aren't just dictating what days they want, which may not lead to coverage. 
uh, when they get out of the office place. Then let's <clears throat> yeah. let you review what Brenda has put given to you and we'll come up with something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a note to myself to look at the police. I mean, I already cross referenced it because you need to say, even though you have said it. Anyway, I will make notes to myself on what to look at again. So, yeah, I will look at that section. And, yeah, good. Okay. Paid vacation leave. So this is the existing policy. It was about five years ago, six years ago, that I think that the town, the five or six years ago, the town changed from the lump sum accrual. Of oh yes. After you had to work yeah. an entire year before you could get leave time to an uh, ongoing accrual system. Correct. Um, this was a chart that it, um, And it's also in hours instead of days. Yep. So one of one of the questions that came up had to do with number two, calculating length of service. Uh, so we have employees that may work a couple hours a year. We have some that may work full time. And the question was in terms of calculating length of service, whether somebody who works full time should how, how do you calculate length of service is the question. Uh, does somebody who worked 20 hours have the same length of service as somebody who works 40 hours for an entire year? I don't. So this is language that uh, is suggested for how, for how to calculate that. Currently, I don't think we have anything that talks about calculating length of service in our policy. And it, it has come it has come up recently in relation to the police department where we have reserve officers who, who pick up uh, one or two, one or shifts a weekend, or one or two shifts a weekend, and then that person, the, you know, that person was hired out full time. And the question was, well, does my past, does my, how do you calculate my past time okay. as it relates to length of service? And they don't really have a good answer. Have an answer, right? I don't think that probably ever come up. How does? And I don't know if we can make a fair comparison, but how does something like that? Get calculated by retired by the by Franklin County or by the Franklin Regional right. Retirement. How do they calculate that? Yeah, if you have an employee that has worked part time, or at least in the past, if you wanted to go buy your time back, you could they, they would calculate how many years of service that. Equivalented to, right? And we can uh, I can look at that a little bit more. Doctor Dale, yeah. But yeah, that 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 that's an issue that has come up. That it would be good to have that have something the policy that can help us know that. Um, on for probationary period, it's from the town's policy, right, that you can't not use vacation time during your probationary period. The only thing we've done, at least in my department, especially like during COVID, where is it? we had a requirement with an employee where they needed to obtain during their probation period a, a hoisting license. Sorry, the state of Massachusetts was not doing any exams because of COVID. That employee could not, there was no way that employee could take the exam. So in this case, we allowed the employee to start using time. Even though they had gotten the license that was required, right? And 
Is there another language in there for the police department probation period? As it relates to vacation time? No. Time, time how long it lasts. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, this is just during vacation. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was in the previous section. Okay. I yep. had a note yep. to, to talk to Jim, Chief Sabine, and JP. Choices. Right. This is, I, I forgot, this is only for vacation time. Yeah. I guess the only other suggestion I have is putting, again, just putting another sentence in there where it stays the same unless we add in a line that says, unless agreed upon by the department or something, something you know what I'm saying, come up with some. Yeah. Or a case by case basis. Um, I don't know. I just hate the in case of another. Opinion. I don't want to set some kind of precedent either where we have one employee. So well, you did it for, but. Yeah. Well, so that's where you get into but, problems because you're trying to have a black and white saying that we treat everyone the same. Correct. And so. I, I I get what you're saying. I take your point completely. I'm not sure I'd write it right into the policy. I would just let okay. it be leave the it. practice. Leave it. Okay. Because, because we're trying to say we treat everyone the same. I, I mean, if there's a departmental reason, of course, then write it in. But okay. hey, Joyce. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. I was. I'm in central time right now, and I just realized this is an hour different. So I really apologize for not being here on time because I because I would have been had I realized. So sorry, that's completely my fault. Can yeah. you tell me like what page we're on at this point? Page 30 of well, it says 30 of 97. Okay. We are looking, we're talking about a vacation leave, and we just talked about number four, probationary period. Yeah, and if you're looking at a printed copy, because I think everyone's printer comes out differently, I'm on page 27 of 93. So uh -huh. depending on how you're- Okay, I think I get your page numbers. I get 93 total here. So 27. 27 of 93. And number four is probationary period. Yep. Yes. Okay. And it looked like this was a part, and what I'm interpreting when it's all red, is that this is not something that, for the most part, that the they wrote in. It's something that Brian went in and corrected in. Yeah, this this is would be our existing language. Oh, okay. The existing language of the personnel policy. Okay. Oh, and I wrote good and good. That wasn't your original word that I was saying good no. and good too. Well, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but there were two places where you wrote something. I was like, oh. okay, this I could like. I don't like most of them, but this I could like. I thought that well, was they're more good or bad. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, this was this was one of their one of this one of the sections in here where it was. Either we gave them an old copy of the, I, I don't know where some of this language came from. So I'll just leave it at okay. that. Okay. Um, five talks about carryover. The town policy has been carryover for 80 hours of paid vacation leave to the next fiscal year. Um, there is a, again, it's, there's sort of a, a relief clause here because, and I don't know if we included it or not, but Due to extenuating circumstances, the select board may allow an employee to carry for over an additional amount of vacation leave. Because um, there have been situations in the past where, yeah. due to staffing issues, it's happened in the highway department where you, know, you might have had two people out on, on medical leave at one point, and it just wasn't feasible for the you know the other employee to take all of the vacation. Time. So the select were voted to allow them to, to carry over a certain amount. I don't know if that's something that we should have. I feel it's got to stay in there, especially when you go to the vacation section and the department head has the right to to recall an employee's vacation too. So that if if I was to tell someone 
we need you back to work. It's not fair to say, by the way, you just lost your vacation time because you got a new set of permits. Yeah, and I, I agree it needs to stay in there and you'll see my question about kind of tightening up a little bit of what the process for these extenuating circumstances, because again, we're trying to say we treat everyone equally. There's no special favors <coughs> here, and there's no discrimination. So anyway, that'll maybe, I, I'm happy to try and work on tightening or adding, but I, I agree it needs to stay in. And I also suggest Due to extenuating circumstances are words that a lawyer never wants. What does that mean exactly? Right. And can you use right. it to help someone and hurt someone else? And no. So yeah. I like that there's something in there though, because I think, especially because we're a small town, um, we I don't know, we maybe everybody needs it, not just small towns, but we we need some flexibility in our policies. We don't want these to be things that you know, tie us in knots. We want to be able to get our work done, treat people fairly. And so having some flexibility is a good thing. It has nothing to do with that. I'm on the select board at this moment. <laughs> um, but I, I have to say the requests that have come before the select board while I've been on there, which is quite a few years, I have never seen an unreasonable request. There's always been a really good reason that would meet, I think, anybody's definition of extenuating circumstances. Um, so that said, though, if there's improved wording for that, that will make it sound like it's a, you know, a fair and more, you know, more fair and equitable than just what um, just extenuating circumstances. I wouldn't be opposed to that. But I, I really think that flexibility is important. And I see it a few different places in the policy where we, you have something that sounds really strict, but we have uh, sort of a way out for those cases where we would get in trouble. We'd like really be in trouble if we had to like enforce every single one of those. And then the, the following paragraph talks about um, employees, who employees who resign or retire In good standing, we'll receive compensation equivalent to earned compensation equivalent to earned paid vacation leave. Provided they've been continuous service of the town for six months. So that's okay. That's what it says. Yeah. That's clear. Mm -hmm. And the town, this is the town not buy back vacation time, will not pay out vacation time. So that says an employee cannot receive pay in lieu of taking vacation time. I assume that's what that means, but I don't know if that's what it says. So that's, that's saying that essentially that, for example, we would, we would pay an employee for 40 hour work week but not allow them to approve vacation time for that week, I guess. But what, what about a situation where an employee would come and say, hey, I have, uh, I have 40 hours of vacation time, but I'd rather get paid for that instead. And they're not at the point of resigning? Yeah. I, th I think the town would say no. Right, you, right. you, you, you can't just go cash it in and get additional money. Right. Yeah, because we don't budget for that. Right. You'd need more money than you're budgeting for. Right. And so you should take some vacation so you freaking get some rest, okay? <laughs> it, it, so this has come up in the context of comp time, of compensatory time. There have been requests in the past from employees for to be paid for their comp time. And thinking back to our the previous section of the policy, I, I don't think it addresses that. So you think we need to have something to address that comp time? The town has paid it out in the past. Hmm. 
paid it out while an employee is continuing to work. Yep. That doesn't work. Um, I'm trying to think the only scenario that I can think is if, if an employee earns comp time at time and a half, like in, let's say one of my hourly employees, the town would be normally if they got their compensation, the town may be paying a time and a half. I'm just trying to think of a scenario where paying them out isn't any additional expense to the town. Because if they're still working and then getting paid out, then we still don't have budgeted, right? We're still short on budget money. Wasn't the comp time though, you got you got paid time and a half, or you could get comp time at time and a half. And it didn't make sense to do both. Like that was not an option to do both. Sorry, I gotta go turn off the alarm here. Pretty much thing that includes up in that other section that talks about that. And I would say that any if you are paying out comp time in addition to still working, then that you're paying above and beyond. We certainly couldn't do that for a um, like a salary employee, like you or me. That couldn't be done because town meeting votes what your salary, my salary is, the town can't pay a nickel over that. So I couldn't. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the whole concept of buying out comp time. I should only be- Or, or getting paid out for comp time. It it's comp time, a, it's comp um, time. That's if they still had some on the books, so to speak, when you retired or- Right, when you leave, you leave. it's not during- the, It's not during your- Not during the course of the tenure of your employment. Be. No, it shouldn't be. But, I mean, one, you're right, budgeting, but also just in general, that's not what comp time is. Comp time is comp time. Right. But, but so you're I saying know. that we have a, so. a history of paying out comp time. All right, well, we need to figure out what- um, This is many I, years, many, many years. I have a whole list of things that I need to follow up with. <laughs> Comp time is now going on. Is comp time aware of the comp time payout thing? That was not something that had to come up for approval. That's just been a practice. No, I think it did. No, I think it's one situation with an employee. It's this is stretching my memory because this is like five or six years back mm. that individuals were compelled. That might have been during my sabbatical when I wasn't on the board for a couple of years there. Yeah. All right. How do we feel, Bob, number seven, credible service or prior experience? This is way at the end, right, before paid personal leave. Well, no, which that's at high at, so at the point of hiring somebody. Well, have you I, done that historically? Yeah. Have you given well, credit? I'll give you an example. I had an employee that worked for the town and the town lately claimed he was laid off because of budget cuts. Two years later the town hired him back. He got his years of service working for the town as credible years of service so that he could come in as a band employee. So like for vacation, for instance, he didn't. So this employee did not leave at their own will. Lost his job. Oh, well, I'm 100% so in favor of that. that, but, that but that's not what number seven says. Number seven, I'm totally in favor. You work so, with Waitley and you come back to Waitley, of course. This says if you work for Los Angeles and you no. come back to Waitley. I mean, it's just, it's too, it's too, like, I would like to just delete the whole thing because you can do it on a case by case basis. You don't need to have a policy, oh, I, but yeah. it, it doesn't, obviously, 
or or tighten the language again because who's going to decide what prior or interim employment experience I go to or my employee goes to Los Angeles and argues that they were doing the same thing in Los Angeles and they're coming back to Waitley. It's just too loosey goosey. But I don't know what what the history and the practice is in the town. Right. So now that I'm looking at that would be more but obviously your scenario absolutely I don't even think you have to have a policy that says what you just said because it's probably in a statute somewhere um so I'll make an I'll make an example um town hires a new police chief who comes with 20 years of police service in another town and they come in and say I want Four weeks of vacation to start. Will will it, I mean will would the contracts supersede that or is that? I was thinking more of examples like town clerks and such because a police chief is is under contract. They're in a power. They're in a position to negotiate that. Okay. It sounds like even so, it would be at the discretion of the select board or other appointing authority. Although for employees, I don't know that there is another em appointment authority. So it's a may yeah. and it's at the discretion of. So I'm just saying <laughs> it's pretty loosey goosey and maybe it's just fine to leave it there because it's a may and at the discretion of. Or does it open the door to someone saying, oh, you discriminated against me because you did it for them, but you won't do it for me. And that's. I don't know, something that I think about when I read such paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Which is probably never going to happen in Waitley. And this Fully section in black was what consultant recommended. Yeah. And who added that particular red at the discretion of the select board? I'm just curious how that got in there, you know? Yeah. Which is well, a, I would think it would be me, but it was a very good addition. So that's why I was thinking it was you because it's, it's a good. very good addition. Because it makes it less hard to sue over or claim discrimination or differential application of the town policy to add that. So we got a may and we got it at the discretion of. So we got an out unless we're acting in bad faith. Okay. Next section, paid personal leave. And this is in this this is there's there's different there, there's different ways, different terminology in which we refer to full-time employees. Sometimes they're regular full-time employees. Sometimes they're full-time employees. There's just different language that they don't like being used. I, I don't know what an irregular full-time employee is, uh, and I don't even know. So I just right. like have terminology the same when we talk yeah. about full-time employees and part-time employees yeah. and what it's being. Um, yeah. I took regular full-time employees to distinguish both from part-time and from People like me who are really elected officials. Um, I don't know if that's the true, but when I was reading it, that's how I took it. So I just, I just think we need to figure out the, the terminology there and have it continue <laughs> throughout the document. Uh, currently, we provide 16 hours, so two eight-hour days of paid personal leave per fiscal year. Part-time employees receive personal time on a pro rata basis based on the number of hours regularly. Scheduled to work on a four-hour work week. This talks about personal leave being different from vacation leave. It does not require advanced approval. How do you feel about that, Keith? Not required advanced approval as a department. Yes. 
in my case, it's usually not too big of a problem because in a sense, it's not much more than getting notice that I'm sick and not coming in today. Yeah. Um, if if that was a scenario where it was continuous of 40, like a full week, then it'd be a lot harder to, to schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, but I usually don't have anyone ever will even take two personal days in a row. They'll, and a lot of times it's like, I need to go do something I didn't realize, you know, yeah. unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. I don't really see it as a scheduling problem considering it's, it's a short. A limited sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three talks about new employees, talks about personal days, one day being available to get a hire, and one additional being awarded after completing six months of service. Personal days don't carry over, personal days are not paid out upon termination of nation of retirement. Uh, next section, Small Necessities Leave Act. Yep. Uh, and that's probably all dictated by law anyway. That's not a section we could like change to anything in really anyway. Certainly not substantially. My only question on this and to Joyce's point, we may not be able to change this. When we're talking about um, educational advancement of a son or daughter, blah, blah, blah. And you know, it's that we keep calling out son and daughter. Are there other situations where it could be, you know, some sort of a ward, um, a grandchild where they are the guardian? I, I'd feel like there are more more boxes that we could cover. I think it's a summary of the actual law, so you know, we probably could be more generous, but not in describing what that act provides. It's been a while since I looked at that, so but I think it's a summary of what the act actually states, not what Waitley wants to do more okay, but this is what the I think the way it's written is, at least the last time I looked, that accurate to the act itself. That's what I was afraid of. Okay, thanks. I mean, I find it hard to believe that someone like Keith or anyone else wouldn't be more generous and we don't need to provide for it within the policy. We just need to recite the act, I think. is. Yeah, the only thing is I, if the person did not have any accrued time use, then it has to I can't be more generous and say, oh, yeah, the town's going to pay you for additional time off. It would have to be without pay. Okay. And this part is without pay, I think. Right, yeah. Yeah. Next session, paid sick leave. This talks about coverage full time and part time employees regularly working 20 hours or more per week. That's the coverage. So currently, the town provides a total of 80 hours of paid sick leave for full time employees, and then it's prorated like most things that we talked about for part-time employees. Uh, probationary period. So there's a crew of paid sick leave during probationary, during the probationary period. Talks about the use of paid sick leave during an employee's probation period will require a physician certificate to be submitted. Um. 
I um I noticed up in number three, at least on the copy I have, there's a sentence fragment in the middle. Yeah, the second um, non-sentence sentence. The allowed 10 days of sick per year. Yeah, that that part that's black in the middle of the red. I think it yeah. might have been intended to be deleted. Yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, I struck that out of my copy here. Okay, I thought that might be the case. Yeah. And then carryover is 720 hours. Does the town offer either short-term or long-term disability coverage? Only, only at the additional cost to employee. Extension of sick leave, extended sick leave may be at the discretion of the time of point authority. So is that, is that extended paid sick leave? Or is that extended unpaid, unpaid leave? Just talk about extended sick leave. I think it's both paid and unpaid, kind of as defined above. I think it covers both. Oh, maybe it doesn't cover both. Sorry, I was wrong there. Well, because we added the words paid and there are two, so it might have otherwise been extended to both paid and unpaid, but no. Well, that section where it says be granted to an employee after all their time has been used, just to, in other words, to, to keep the job. It's going to go unpaid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's still that they still have a job when they come back. Yeah. It, there's a, a section later on about unpaid leave. So should we reference that section later on? Be extended. Mm -hmm. According to that section or? That's further in? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see it. We'll just type on unpaid leave for reasons not otherwise addressed in the policies. But get addressed in the policy. It's duplicated. Why do we need extension of sick leave in a I didn't quite catch what Keith asked there. I'm saying if if number seven is extension of sick leave, and further on in we have section M where it says unpaid leave, why do we it seems like it's duplication or minus something? I mean, I guess the question is an employee might wonder what happens when my sick leave run, my paid sick leave runs out. And then, it, and then it can be covered under right unpaid leave because right and that uh, that number seven um it's kind of odd because it doesn't say anything about whether that's paid or unpaid extended sick leave and because you're right after you're talking about paid leave it says extended sick leave may at the town administrator or appointing authority shall be granted to an employee after 
Actually, yeah, the shall probably shouldn't be there. May be granted or shall. It says may shall be granted. So one of those words is not right. I got stuff shall. I got it. Yeah. And I almost think that yeah. that section seven would be referred to if we had a sick bank. Or the mm. town funded disability, short term disability insurance. The town doesn't. Yeah, but we don't. Yeah. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but that's a bigger issue than the than we have in front of us and just looking at the policy and making it reflect what we currently do. Well, if it's really, I mean, if this is really like additional sick leave, paid or unpaid, we should specify whether it is which one. And if that's over and above the Family and Medical Leave Act, which is just on the very next page. And that's unpaid. And that is unpaid, yeah. Yeah, so I think this needs to be unpaid. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, it needs to be clarified, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it just kind of feels like we need to rewrite this section. Yeah. yeah. Number seven? Yeah. Just, yeah. To me, it's what happens, what happens when an employee runs out of paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I... I think at that point in time, the department head and the uh, administrator, I need, I need to sit down because it, you just can't have it open ended. It, it would seem to me that you would maybe reference the process for requesting unpaid leave. Which goes, as I said, it goes back to that section M, which sort of addresses it where it says you need to have it such reason submitted in writing. Let's see that as duplication. Yeah, although M is talking about it. It might have a, a need to leave that's not related to health. I mean, yeah, I agree with you, it looks duplicative, but unpaid leave, they're giving more broad reasons that the select board or town administrator, you know, select board can approve leave that's not unpaid leave that's not six leave. It might be, I, I don't know. Right. It, yeah. There might be another reason. But, you know, my wife is got cancer. I, I, I yeah, that's a very bad example. So no, no. there might be some reason that's not the employee's sickness that also right. it, it, it could be a short term opportunity for their spouse. That has happened, at least at where I work, that has happened. Somebody's spouse had a had a opportunity. They could go along with it for six months. They wanted six months off and have their job back, but asking for no pay. No. And uh, and and so my employer got someone to fill in six months for that person. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, it might be on that number seven. Just, just refer to the Family Medical Leave Act section, which is F coming up right ahead of it. Seems simple enough. I was, I was, I had a question about this box that was included. And it talks about employers must allow employees to earn use up to 40 hours of sick leave each calendar year. Where are you looking? In, a, in this box, it says Massachusetts laws regarding sick leave. Um, the box, what page are you looking at? Just after, just after 10. After just 10. After, yeah, it's just oh, 10. Yeah. Employers must allow employers must allow employees to earn and use up to forty hours of sick leave each calendar year. Is that any employee? I, I just don't like how that's worded. 
that, that right. seems like we're out of compliance. And if we are accruing, um, oh no, we're 80 hours. Sorry. Back to two. Yeah, I'm not even sure that this even applies to a municipality. So I wondered why that was plopped in there, but maybe you can ask. I mean, it's so kind of out of place to have all the pages that we have and then in the middle of one page you're plopping Massachusetts law only. It's a, it's a summary of it. And it's, yeah, I don't know why that was. I, yeah. I want the same thing. And I'm not actually sure that, that would apply to the town of Wayside. started in small small businesses post COVID, I thought. I remember that coming into play, but um oh, or again, okay. you know what the question is, all right, so pick somebody like a part-time police officer. Nowhere in here does it say you have to work a certain amount of hours. Right. That's why I was wondering. I'll just Use a position like transfer station at that. Oh, there you go. Good it does not, doesn't, our custodian doesn't have any, doesn't earn any sick time under our current policy. Nor, nor do like the, our custodian. The custodian does not work more than and 20 any non benefited part time employee does not currently Correct. receive sick time, paid sick leave. And if they should, then we should start doing it yesterday. Um, yeah, so I, guess that's, I guess that's the point of research. Hmm. Oh, so sick time is not something that's prorated. You have to work. Our policy, if we go back into it, yeah. it says you work minimum 20 hours a week. Hours a right. It says regular full-time employee are eligible for sick leave, which means more than 20 hours a week. It, yeah, that's an initial, that's one of the discussions we had at one of the earlier meetings about What's full time? I mean, there's, we don't have a good definition of what full time is. Is it right. 40 hours, 36 hours? Is it 32 hours? Is it 21 hours? Right. 32 hours. Um, yeah, I guess we may have to make a decision or, or at least a recommendation. Because um, it, it does seem like with, with so many other benefits, it's prorated. But this one, I, I don't see the place where it's prorated unless it's in front of my nose and I don't see it. And I don't mean I, I don't mean this in a negative. It's going to sound negative when it comes out, but it could just be the. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just say it could just be that it's just a lazy summary of the law, which in the terminology that we talk about. Right. And anything in that's in there, like the like what you can use it for, that's in one of the other sections, isn't it? Um, under allowable uses under six. Right. It doesn't seem to add any information. So I I don't know that the box needs to be there. I took it since it was in a box to be sort of an aside from the people who were making this for us. And yeah. Maybe reminding us, you know, you um, forty hours is your minimum, right, in a calendar year. That's how I interpreted it too. That it's for our information, not for the policy per se. Yeah. So we'll have to look into that. Okay. Because that's currently not something that the town does. Yeah. And do we, I mean, what's, uh, you will know the practice better than me. Do people who work 30 hours a week still accrue uh, 3.077 hours per pay period for a total of 80 hours each fiscal year? No, prorated. Prorated. Okay. So uh, 80 hours I, would be. Okay, so it is prorated. It is prorated. Okay, got it. It's prorated based on eighty hours. Four, forty. A fraction of forty yeah. hours a week to work. Yeah. yeah we, um, we. Oh, per pay period. We give 80. up to eight. It's based on eighty hours of sick time per calendar year. That's what that three point oh seven seven is. So if somebody works less than twenty hours, 
and they're not going to meet the 40 hour right they're not going to meet the 40 hour requirement so we'll, we'll just have to look that up yeah Next section talks about the FMLA. Yeah, and that's pretty much boilerplate from the state law, right? That's kind of the seems to be a part of the federal law. I mean, they shouldn't define the term the act. I wrote that in there because it's this is obviously a copy and paste job because yeah. anyway, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we're allowed to change, but two things in the parental leave section that I wasn't happy with were leave for the purposes of giving birth. That makes it sound like it's only the mother as opposed to to say birth of a child, which is how I think it's worded when you look at the policy and in, in the back. Um, and then the other thing that I was didn't that I questioned was in the next paragraph, however, an employee may elect to use. My question is, however, or in addition, that you can take more than the eight weeks if you have the vacation time, the sick time, whatever the however sound makes it sound like it's instead of that you're still capped at eight weeks, just whether you're paid or not. So you're talking to, to clarify whether that needs to be done concurrently. I'm sorry, say that again. You're talking about whether the so your 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 question is whether someone could take the eight weeks under the parental leave act unpaid and then use additional paid time to take additional time beyond the eight weeks. Right. This may be another case of why are we saying anything? Yeah. That the parental leave act, no, I'm learning from you. Parental leave act leave is unpaid. And that's what we're talking about here. That doesn't preclude other leave talked about elsewhere. And, I look and, to our and, lawyer. Uh, that's, I think, intending to. The way I read it, I would be agreeing with Susan, was that this was just reminding people that, you know, you've got paid leave as well. And that that doesn't have to be concurrent. It could be one after the other. I had a, um, I had a different wording thing that's probably less, <laughs> less important, but... I, I think, and it maybe it goes back to what Brian was saying about finding uh, consistent wording, but um, they talk about the employer. Well, this kind of sounds odd because the employer is the town and there most other places it refers to the town yeah. as the employer. So I would add that into something that's, you know, just doesn't seem right on the parental leave part. But if we were to strike that, Paragraph that would take care of my problem too. I thought it was Police? strange. Go ahead. I, I just thought that, that was strange, provided the use of such time is in accordance with the employer's leave policies. Yeah. Uh, Are we going to be talking stop, about stop, the, stop. the detailed policies later? What's that? Are we going to be talking about the detailed policies later? Because I looked at the the detail of this one and I had some comments, but I didn't know if we were supposed to review that now or later. Oh, I didn't oh. bring it with me, so I didn't review it. <laughs> yeah, I confess I have not read each of the attached 12 or so policies. I mean, this, this, them after, yeah. this is way, way, way too much um but here we are and I, again i'm gonna say you we are in great hands with brian i can tell you've taken a lot of time with it but it's just so much detail and you know it doesn't bother me reciting actual law 
the law is there. You don't need to recite it, but okay, it doesn't hurt. It, the things that might hurt, or at least in my experience, are policies that you actually have and don't follow. The law is superimposed on this policy, recite or don't recite. I would like it to be briefer, but okay, it's not. But yeah, that's my concern. To, I, only because I have to leave in five minutes, I'm just going to say the same thing I've been saying kind of all along. And these are all state laws. So they almost. Or federal. Yeah. Some are federal. Yeah, I mean, right. But all I'm just saying, you can almost say like the highlights of parental leave, pregnant workers, fairness act, and things like that are covered under the. Are governed by. They give the employee a heads up as they need to know just, where to go. Instead of filling this all out and saying it's part of. Right. We can't change the state laws or federal law. Yeah. Right. But I don't know that the, the state law probably doesn't have that. However, an employee may elect to use blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's necessarily in state law. Well, this just just this one little paragraph, the employers leave policies that you I didn't even catch that, but thank you. It just tells me again that it's like a copy and paste, and you can't maybe not fitting together as well as I might have liked. Well, that's what this was. Yeah, I'm not as polite as you, Brian, apparently. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while to get over what we got. <laughs> Were they receptive when, you, so I missed the last meeting again, I apologize, but at our first meeting, like when we were all going like, it doesn't even look like they really tailored it to Waitley, even when you pointed that out to them, which I'm sure you had to go back and have that uncomfortable conversation, did the consultants sort of acknowledge that that was the case or? They, she under, I, I think she understood that what they were providing was more boilerplate and new than oh okay so they didn't think that they were trying to kind of duplicate and expand on our existing policies they were giving us let's start from ground zero but um they tell your policies <laughs> yeah it, that's sort of what was provided there there was some efforts to to integrate it but they weren't <laughs> Mm. Um, so I mean, so parental leave, pregnant workers fairness act, leave for victims and families, members of domestic abuse. I mean, we're all just sort of not we, but those are those are state law that govern these in these three cases. There's a there's a, a state law that lays out what we need to do as employers and what employees are entitled to. Mm -hmm. um, just quickly on the plea for victims and family members of domestic abuse, there was a, uh, number two is it talks about notice. And the last sentence is appropriate forms of documentation are available from the town administrator. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> hmm. I I don't even I don't even if I had forms I don't know what I, I don't know it's strange. Yeah, is that something we can go back and ask the consultants if they could provide us with the documentation so that our town administrator will have it? <laughs> yeah. I've never, I, I guess I read right through that, but no, I've never heard of that before. But not that that means anything, but. It's like when you say appropriate forms of documentation are available from the town administrator, it seems like appropriate forms of documentation are available from your doctor or, you know, your police officer or whoever it was who is, can really document what's going on. I mean. Yeah, I could there be something missing from the sentence? 
Could it be appropriate forms for documentation? And is there should there be like a standard form that someone would fill out? Jeez, I've represented a lot of employers, public oh. and private, and I've worked for a big law firm, and I've never heard or seen or and I've done him. Yeah, I've never, I've never. This is new to me, but and I, and I must have read right over it. So yeah, my. Well, you gotta go back to is it Sandy? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 we, I, we yeah, actually look at the law too to see if it says anything about it, but. I, I sort of feel like if there was some obligation of an employer to have appropriate forms of documentation, you would have heard about it or I might have heard about it. So I don't know what that refers to. I doubt it's in the statute, but sure, take a look or I'll take a look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, reading in conjunction with the sentence before, it's the employee has to provide documentation, evidencing that, the, that there was some you know, some type of right. That's domestic what violence or some situations so appropriate forms of documentation, or maybe so acceptable forms of documentation are available. Should or be submitted to the like, administration. Like yeah, that. should be submitted. Yeah, there's something wrong with that sentence. The um, yeah. so one, so uh, Jay Reedman. So they, they included five. The town's current policy is three in terms of the number of days. And one for the, the, the last paragraph is one yeah. also. And that's something they have. I've always, do we feel that three is adequate? I, I've always felt it has been, but. Yeah. So it talks about the, the definition of a family member, and I don't want to go into too much, get in the weeds too much, right? but significant other or life partner. I'm not really sure how those would be defined. Very interpretive. All the other ones seem to have some type of legal relationship thing. Can be shown. I don't know. It may be not an issue. Maybe it's just something that we just have to deal with. But uh, I don't yeah, think it's going yeah, to be to, to me, to me, to be, you know, yeah, to me, to be. Yeah. That's, you guys are closer to abuse possibilities. That's the only reason I can discuss it. And I, I just feel like. Yes. You can. I agree. Leave it as is. Yeah, he talks about jury duty. Al talks about uh, military leave. M talks about unpaid leave. Yep. And then N and O were added from our existing um, existing policy because we have the professional development. Paragraph here in, in job related education programs. We want to call it night. Brenda, you need to. I have to go. Uh, I'm sorry. It's so, my mother. So yeah, hour and a half. We're, let's just call it a night. All right. I'm keeping day. my actual markup. I'm giving you a copy of it because I made new notes to myself. But anyway, do your best with it. <laughs> call me, don't call me, whatever you like. Uh, I think a lot of stuff we talked about tonight and it might yeah. Yeah. Do we want to set our next meeting date? That's our last thing I wanted to do before we adjourn and discuss our next meeting options. Yeah. Are we aiming for like two weeks out or three weeks yeah, out? 22nd or 29th is two or three. So 
I'm going to vote that we forge ahead and go for the 22nd just because we, we got to, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, like we've got yeah. to come back. Yeah, 22nd works better for me too. Okay. I do the 29th in conflict. 22nd Rose, is good. Susan, the 22nd is good? Yes. Yep. Six o'clock. Okay. So our next meeting is the 22nd at 6 p.m. What sections should we review? Uh, we're stopping here at page 30, well, 33 on my copy, which was the end of, uh, oh, that was number O there. It was the end of, we start with six next time. Yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. Six. sorry. Yeah. So we, we so some of your homework's already done. You already did section six. Okay. And then it seems like we don't get further than about twenty pages in any given sitting. So six, seven, twenty maybe. pages. <laughs> Wasn't there only nine sections to begin with? So eight. Just well, do. do yeah. Six, seven, maybe eight. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, how about a oh, motion? Yeah. Eight short, so good. Yeah, let's try motion. six, seven, and eight. Motion to adjourn. I'll do a roll call. Second. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Keith, myself, I, and Brenda? Aye. All right, unanimous. Good night, everybody.